Okay. Yes. I started. Thank you. Uh, so let me introduce. It's a pleasure to introduce Dimit Kerner from Ben Gurion University of the Negev. We will talk about which is which ICs are EMICs in a metaconical. Thank you very much, Dimit, for accepting the invitation. You can start when you are ready. Many thanks. Thanks to the organizer for letting me to give a talk. <clears throat> uh, so, uh, uh, a disclaimer, I know nothing about uh, Lipset geometry of singularities. Yes, this is probably my more or less first serious work on it. Uh, and we have some results, and uh, at least uh, Lev said that uh, the results are meaningful and reasonable. And so I thought I wanted uh, to, to tell about, to present these results. So let's start. Let's start from the very beginning. So take a complex analytic germ, yes, inside CN, and the most naive question is how does it look like? Yes. Uh, so for example, uh, in the simplest case, suppose you have a planar cusp, cusp, the plane curve of singularity, then usually people draw just the real picture. Yes, but of course this is a very uh, distantly uh, Distantly <laughs> reminds the actual picture. Yes, it is just a particular section of the complex germ. Now, a more informative picture is this one. Yes, uh, people try to start from really the uh, complex germ inside C2, project inside into R3, and then of course uh, the projection will have self intersections. Uh, therefore, uh, this is uh, this picture is misleading. It is just an approximation. Yes, but still the question remains, how does uh, the complex analytic germ look like locally? So uh, once uh, maybe to, to say something more, so uh, X0, of course, it cannot be uh, analytically embedded into R3. It cannot be even differentially embedded into R3. Yes, for various reasons, for example, the local ring, yes, uh, the local analytic ring of this curve singularity if you consider it just as a differentiable ring, it is not differentiably isomorphic to the quotient of the ring in R3. As one can show. Uh, therefore, we cannot differentiably embed the germ of plane curve singularity into R3. So we must uh, uh, we must give up the with the differential structure. Well, then we we go to the level of continuity, to just to the topological level. So let me recall the classics. Uh, so take the link, yes, we intersect X uh, by a sphere of small radius. Yes, uh, for example, if we speak about the curve germ, then the link will be disjoint union of circles. These circles will be embedded uh, somehow in a knotted way inside the sphere, but we don't care currently about the embedding, but we will because we want to speak only about the abstract germ, forgetting how it, how exactly it is embedded. And then uh, if the germ has an isolated singularity, then the link is a compact manifold and its infinity type is constant. Yes, uh, when the radius is small enough, this infinity type of the link does not change. And then the conic structure theorem of Milner tells us that the germ is uh, homeomorphic to the germ of the cone over its link. Yes, so this uh, phi, this is a homeomorphism. It is not an embedded homeomorphism. It is an abstract homeomorphism. Of course, we must forget about the embedding of the germ. And this is uh, the basic, the, the first step in the vi visualization process. Yes, so once again, here phi is a non-embedded homeomorphism. And uh, therefore, any irreducible curve germ is uh, not abstractly homeomorphic to just the cone, the cone over a circle, the simplest, uh, simplest possible picture. And in most cases, uh, this homeomorphism it is very far from being differentiable. Yes, uh, um, we start from a singular uh, germ. Yes, so we cannot speak about differentiability in the ordinary sense, but one could speak about differentiability in weakness sense or in some other ways. 
uh, but uh, in whichever way phi is usually far from be differentiable and even worse uh, it distorts the local distances significantly distorts and therefore uh, as it distorts the local distances it really changes the angles so maybe the better picture for for say for curved germ is not the cone but the horn yes maybe uh, th this is a more realistic picture and picture geometry uh, treats such questions so let me proceed uh, oops. Uh, yes, by the way uh, is everything okay you, you hear me yes yes oh, good so uh, let's speak about my Lipschitz equivalence and inner metrically conical germs. So I, I recall the completely standard definitions. So we speak about a germ and the, and the metric on it. Yes, the inner metric, uh, it is uh, defined by as the infimum of all the lengths of rectifiable, rectifiable paths. And then uh, a homeomorphism of two metric germs, it is called by Lipschitz if it does not distort the metric too much so the distortion goes in controlled manner yeah so uh, the distance between the two points in the origin and the distance between the two points in the target yes so they are comparable here is some constant yes so the constant is uh, uniform for the whole x yes it does not depend on the choice of the points and finally uh, the germ is called inner metrically conical if uh, uh, this uh, conical homeomorphism from the previous slide can be chosen actually by Lipschitz. So this is the uh, notion of inner metrically conical uh, germ and uh, in some sense these germs are the basic, the, they are the most simple from the point of view of metric geometry, of inner metric geometry, if you don't care about the embedding. So they are the most simple and of course uh, people want to see as many metrically conical germs as possible because they are the most simple so let's see some examples start from the example number zero if the germ is already homogeneous then of course it is a cone yes trivially uh, now uh, any complex curve germ is uh, inner metrically conical is, is very well known yeah so uh, we can present it as the just as a wedge of cones in the most naive way. And uh, this picture is faithful, not only at the level of uh, continuity, but also at the level of by Lipschitz equivalence. Now, uh, somehow it appears that the more, more serious singularities uh, were not known to be IMC, not checked, not verified. At least I, I don't know the references. And probably the first uh, cases were considered by uh, Lev and Alessandra. Yeah, so among uh, surface singularities, complex surface singularities in C3, yes, uh, if you consider the AK type, then the only inner metrically conical is A1. Um, and so maybe it's uh, somehow discouraging, yes, that uh, of the whole infinite series of singularities, only the first is inner metrically conical and all the rest are not. Well, uh, and then there was a result uh, the, of Lev, Alexandra, and Walter. They considered weighted homogeneous complex analytic germs, surface germs inside C3. Yes, uh, with weights. Here are some weights. Order them by, yes, uh, we can always order so omega x is less or equal than omega y, less or equal than omega z. And they proved that if the two smallest weights are not equal, non-equal, then X is not inner metrically conical. So this is a very simple abstraction to be, to be inner metrically conical. And then uh, there was a paper yes, of uh, Lev and Walter and Ann. So and they established thick, thick, thin decomposition for complex analytic surface germ. I will not give uh, any details here, uh, just uh, um, the, the, the only uh, the only sentence which is relevant for my talk is that um, a, a germ is inner metrically conical if and only if it has no thin parts, whatever that means. And then they gave explicit algorithms to verify uh, whether a germ is 
inner metrically conical or not via the resolution graph. So if you have a resolution graph of the uh, of your germ, if you know how to resolve it, then there is some uh, very explicit algorithm, not terribly complicated, and you see uh, the thin, thick, thin decomposition, and in particular, you can see whether the germ is inner metrically conical or not. So this is a very good criterion. The only problem is that uh, it is often complicated to resolve a singularity, even if you speak about uh, surface singularities. And the higher dimension, it's even more tricky. So, and the general impression was that uh, IMCs uh, are very rare in some sense. Of course, it, uh, here I put quotations. Yes, uh, it depends uh, uh, in which class of germs you, 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 you check the, this property. But for many natural classes of germs, only very few representatives are IMCs and all the rest are not. Yeah, so um, our question was, uh, uh, is there any simpler way to verify the IMC or non-IMC property uh, somehow in a very pedestrian way without resolving the singularity? And how rare are IMCs? Yes, because you see they are in some sense the basic types from the metric point of view. So maybe if they are the basic types, maybe they, they can be just classified. Uh, as some sort of, you know, simple singularities, unimodal singularities, bimodal singularities, there are explicit tables. So maybe uh, these uh, IMCs can be just explicitly classified and uh, well, and that's it. And so roughly speaking, uh, our results are we propose a structure theorem for isolated complete intersections, which are inner metrically conical. And in particular, we see that indeed the IMCs, they are very rare on one hand, but on the other hand, there are lots of them. There are lots of uh, IMCs and uh, in some sense, they cannot be classified. Okay, so uh, uh, by the way, are there any questions? Please feel free to interrupt me at any, at any step, at any point. Yes, if there are no questions, so let's proceed. So let's, uh, our criterion uh, are in terms of the polar locus and the discriminant. In some sense, this is the most naive thing to do. Uh, to resolve singularities is much more complicated. So let's start. Uh, below, for most of my slides, um, I will speak about uh, a complex analytic surface singularity, which is an isolated complete intersection. So the dimension is two. And the multiplicity is p. I will always denote by, by p. And let's start. I, I will draw some diagram now. So uh, you see uh, x0 sits inside the uh, complex space, the germ of the complex space of some higher dimension. And then first of all, we project, project onto the C2, onto the plane. So we take some projection. We restrict this projection to the surface. Yes, in the most simple way. And we assume that uh, this restriction, this pi, that is finite, which is a very mild restriction. Yes, so I don't want any non-finite morphisms. So let pi be finite. And then if it is finite, uh, it is a ramified covering. It is p to one. Yes, because the multiplicity is p, so we have a covering. We have some germ, could be complicated. It covers the plane. And then we have the critical locus of the pi, or the polar locus, uh, as you prefer. And uh, the critical locus is mapped to the discriminant. Yeah, the discriminant is the plane curve singularity. It sits inside the plane. Uh, in general, the discriminant has non-trivial scheme structure. It could have multiple components, can be non-reduced. But uh, in this talk, I will always take the discriminant just theoretically. I will forget about its multiple components. So just say theoretically, it is a plain curve singularity. Good. And uh, uh, well, so uh, I will restrict the projection. Uh, I will impose some condition. So I do not assume that the projection is generic, but I assume that at least it satisfies the following condition. So if you take the kernel of the projection, yes, what is mapped to the origin, then this kernel must intersect the tangent cone of x only at the origin. So 
So in some sense, this is the minimal genericity assumption. Sometimes when speaking about uh, coverings, when presenting a germ as a covering of, of some C2, people speak about generic projections, but uh, we will often take non-generic projections we will only assume that this condition of convenient covering is satisfied. This is the minimal condition which is needed. So once again, a convenient covering is not necessarily generic. Uh, it could have very high ramification, but at least it is generic with respect to the tangent cone. So here is the first theorem. We have the discriminant. Uh, it is a plane curve singularity. Now, if this plane curve singularity is an ordinary multiple point, then uh, x0 is uh, an inner metric cone. So we wanted many inner metric cones. So here is uh, a way to construct them. So uh, let's see. Okay, let's, uh, if there are no questions, let's, let's see some examples. So let's start from the simplest possible case. So we speak about a surface singularity, complex surface singularities inside C3, uh, defined by one equation. Here is the equation z to the power p minus a, some function of x, y. It is a, just some power series in two variables. Yes, and uh, well, let's assume that this plane curve singularity is an ordinary multiple point of multiplicity at least p. Then x0 is inner metrically conic. And already in this way, you construct uh, a series of uh, IMCs. Of course, you can e e easily see, easily classify all them. Yes, this is a very restricted series. Sorry, Sorry. Dimitri. Yes. Sorry. What do you mean by ordinary multiple point? What's the definition of that? Yes, so uh, again, uh, we speak about plane curve singularity. Yes, uh, split it into branches. So we want that each branch is smooth and any two branches are non-tangent. Yes, if you wish, blow up it once and it is re resolved. Uh, a representative is x to the power p plus y to the power p. Yes, so, or any x to the power q plus y to the power q. This is an ordinary multiple point. Is it okay? It's okay, it's okay. Thank you. Yes. Okay, so <clears throat> this was the simplest example. Let's take a bit more involved example. Ah, uh, just uh, an uh, uh, remark. So uh, if you see here, uh, we have the covering. Yes, x0 projects and it covers the C2. And the covering is totally ramified over the discriminant. Yes, uh, when a equals to 0, uh, all the p roots they merge to just one root. So we have here very very significant ramification. So th this covering is certainly non-generic. Still, it is convenient. Now let's uh, see another the case of another covering. Just a bit more general. So once again, it is surface singularity analytic uh, inside C3. It is a hypersurface, and the defining equation is z to the power p minus z times a1 minus a0. a1 and a0 are some, some functions of x and y. And we want that the total multiplicity be p. Therefore, uh, the multiplicity of a1 must be at least this one, and the uh, multiplicity of a0 also must be is bounded. So this is, uh, uh, this is uh, uh, already a significant family of germs. You can cook up various germs in this way. And now suppose uh, that this combination a1 to the power p minus a0 to the power p minus 1, yes, which again defines a plane curve singularity, is an ordinary multiple point. Then x is IMC. So again, um, uh, here you, you get a, now a larger family of uh, IMCs. Yes. Uh, this plane curve singularity a1 to the power p minus a0 to the power p minus 1, it is just the discriminant of this equation. Actually, there are some numeric coefficients there, but I omit them currently. 
uh, some numeric coefficients which uh, are irrelevant here. Uh, okay, so, uh, and there are lots of other examples. Yes, you can start from various I, uh, various isolated complete intersections. Yes, hypersurfaces or complete intersections. Yes, project them. Sometimes the discriminant will be an ordinary multiple point. Uh, and uh, in this way, you construct uh, lots and lots of IMCs. And the link will have various topological types. Yes, so you have rich amount of possible uh, topological types of links for which you can realize them as uh, the links of IMCs. And so in, in some sense, uh, this gives that IMCs cannot be classified because uh, for every scenario of ramification, you will get a whole series of uh, IMCs and you, one cannot uh, classify all the scenarios. So there are so many of IMCs that they cannot be classified in some sense. So then the question is maybe they are not so rare. If there are so many IMCs, yes, maybe uh, uh, they are not of measure zero uh, inside the set of all the singularity types. The answer is no, they are rare because uh, usually, again, in quote unquote, the discriminant is not an ordinary multiple point. So uh, if you start from some uh, random germ and you project it, the discriminant will have some cusps or higher similarities. So uh, any questions? If there are no questions, then I will proceed. Well, uh, so uh, once again, uh, the discriminant Usually, can in um, in many cases, the discriminant will be not an ordinary multiple point. So let's consider this case. What happens when the discriminant is not an ordinary multiple point? Notice that this theorem is not if and only if criterion. It is just one direction. So uh, the second part, second slide. So once again, I repeat, uh, we speak about isolated complete intersections. as dimension two surfaces and multiplicity is P. And we have this diagram. Yes, so once again, our X, it sits inside uh, inside the project, sorry, inside the germ of the affine space of some high dimension. We project it onto the plane. The projection is a covering, ramified covering, P to one. And then we have the critical locus of the projection and it is sent to the discriminant and now, uh, this discriminant is the uh, plane curve singularity, and we, we will take its tangential decomposition. So it is not the branch decomposition, it is the composition into parts with uh, the common tangent line. I don't know what is the official standard name for this decomposition, I call it just tangential. So the tangent cone uh, to each delta k uh, is just one line. And for two different delta k's, uh, the tangent cones are mutually, mutually generic. They intersect only at one point. This is called tangential decomposition. So, for example, if delta is the ordinary multiple point, if it, it is a collection of smooth branches pairwise non-tangent, then each delta k is just one smooth branch. In this case, the tangential decomposition is just the ordinary decomposition into branches. But uh, if delta is not ordinary multiple point, then at least for one k, uh, this delta k will be singular. This multiplicity will be at least two. Maybe for several k, so, but at least for one. And so theorem. So first of all, I will state it, and then I will explain all the ingredients. So the theorem is that uh, the isolated complete intersection uh, yes, uh, surface singularity is inner metrically conical if and only if P, the multiplicity, is bigger than something. I will define what, what sits in the brackets. Whenever uh, the multiplicity of delta K is bigger or equal than two. So this is an if and only if criterion. Uh, so what it, said, it, what it tells, take the discriminant, decompose it uh, tangentially, and for each piece of the decomposition, 
which is similar check verify this inequality and now i will uh, speak what are the ingredients inside the brackets so here are the ingredients this is uh, the covering data so first of all let's take the branch decomposition you take delta k it has just one tangent line but it could be reusable so split it now into irreducible components for each irreducible component we have the total ramification index of the covering denoted by qi yes so you take some point of the irreducible component delta ki take count all the points over it and see what is the ramification so here is the exact precise formula so qi is p p is the degree of the covering minus uh, the number of the pre-images set theoretically this is the total ramification of the covering and then uh, the one ingredient inside this formula in the theorem will be just the sum of qi times the multiplicity of the corresponding branch of the discriminant so this is one ingredient yes uh, once again it's, we speak here about uh, the ramif total ramification indices and degrees and orders of, of multiplicities of the discriminant now uh, to define the other ingredient i will have to blow up but just once yes blow up uh, the space just once now take the strict transform x tilde and then we will blow up also the plane yes if you blow up upstairs we will have to blow up downstairs as well and then uh, our projection pi the initial covering will will lift to the uh, covering once again x tilde will map will will map finitely onto uh, the blown up plate plane it is still a ramified covering where it is ramified it is ramified over the strict transform of the discriminant before the strict transform so first, uh, let's uh, introduce so here is the exceptional divisor yes we blow up the affine space the exceptional divisor is the projective space and also downstairs there is the exceptional divisors divisor so there are two exceptional divisors and now take the strict transform of the discriminant yes uh, so essentially uh, i construct here the diagram which is uh, the blow up of the previous diagram now uh, the strict transform of the discriminant is reducible yes because the discriminant itself was reducible so we had that uh, tangential decomposition for the discriminant they were all pairwise non-tangent therefore when i lift them when i blow up they will get just separate so this delta tilde is now the disjoint union of uh, the state transforms they are the connected components now uh, for each such connected component uh, take the intersection point with the exceptional divisor yes denoted this uh, ok the intersection is just one point because the tangent line to delta k is just one line Tang sorry tangent cone is just one line and then uh, take the total pre-image of this okay upstairs this is some finite set several several points could be just one point or many points finite set and then we will take the multi germ at this set so once again we had some surface downstairs then we take the strict transform yes it is a surface still and uh, several points of this surface where it intersects the exceptional divisor uh, and we take the multi germ it is a multi germ in general it is it has several connected components but each connected component could be further reducible yes it could be irreducible or reducible it could happen so let's just count the total number number of irreducible components it could be equal uh, to the number of connected components or maybe bigger at least it is one yes and it is bounded by p p is the total degree of the covering so this is rk and this is the additional ingredient in our theorem so 
here is now finally the full statement. Once again, uh, the surface singularity, the complex analytic surface singularity, or yes, uh, isolated complete intersection, is IMC if and only if this statement calls whenever delta k is singular, whenever its multiplicity is two. So you take the discriminant, the composite tangentially, and for each non-smooth part, you check this, this condition. Uh, well, uh, so this is the theorem. Let's see how it works in examples. So let's start from the case of multiplicity two. There are not too many uh, surface singularities of multiplicity two. Yeah, so let's speak about this. Now, uh, let's try to see uh, this multiplicity two. So P is two. So how can uh, such a inequality hold? Two must be bigger than something which is certainly at least one. Yes, so we don't have a lot of choices. So if the discriminant is an ordinary multiple point, then x0 is inermetically conical, as we saw on the previous slide. And if the discriminant is not an ordinary multiple point, which means the multiplicity of some delta k is bigger or equal than two, then x0 is not inermetically conical. So this closes the case of uh, germs of multiplicity two. Yes, um, uh, very simple manner. Now let's take, uh, ah, uh, yes, some ex numerical examples. So take a k. Yes, uh, here are the defining equations. This is uh, they are of multiplicity two, and we see that uh, yes, if we project to the x y plane. The discriminant will be ordinary multiple point only for a1 uh, singularity. So, of all a case, uh, only a1 is in an inner metric And uh, dk, for example, yes. Uh, so, of all the d case, only d4 will be inner metric Also, here you see you just project onto xy plane, you see uh, the plane curve. That you will get there, and uh, it is an ordinary multiple point only for k equal to four. So this is the case of multiplicity two. Now let's speak about multiplicity three. And suppose that the discriminant is not an ordinary multiple point, because if the discriminant is much ordinary multiple point, then uh, uh, the germ will be inermetically conical. So the multiplicity of at least one delta k is at least two. Well, if the multiplicity is at least three, then this inequality is violated. If rk is at least two, then this equality is violated. If qi is at least two, then this inequality is violated. So if at least one of these conditions hold, then this inequality is violated. And the germ is not inermetically conical. Yes, uh, you just uh, check the combinations. And otherwise, the germ is inermetically conical. So in this way, you address uh, uh, germs of multiplicity three, and so on. Of course, as the multiplicity grows, you will get m m more and more cases. Yes, and the analysis will be more involved. By, but uh, for each particular class of singularities, you can you can do it in finite time. So uh, maybe questions. I think I have plenty of time. Yes. So once again, this theorem it is an if and only if criterion. Uh, uh, at least uh, I, I would I would say it is a bit simpler than the criterion via the resolution graph. We don't need to resolve anything. You only need to understand uh, the discriminant, which is sometimes uh, it is also complicated, but sometimes uh, you see it easily. Well, uh, so if there are no questions, uh, let's proceed. Uh, some corollaries. So uh, the first corollary uh, is the restriction 
on the possible tangent cones of inner metric or conical singularities. So once again, uh, our X is, is the germ, yes, the germ of isolated complete intersection singularity of dimension two, and its multiplicity is P. And here is the main theorem, yes, this, uh, this is the structure theorem. It classifies uh, when uh, X zero is EMC or not. And take the projective projectivized tangent cone. So take the projectivized tangent cone. Uh, yes, uh, here is the notation. It sits inside the exceptional divisor, inside the projective space. Uh, I will recall the case of hypersurface. So suppose we have a hypersurface, yes, inside C3. It is defined by one equation, uh, yes, so as always, we, we present the equation as the leading terms, the terms of lowest order plus higher order terms. And then uh, the projectivized tangent cone is defined just by the lowest order terms. So it is a projective plane curve. Now, it will be important here uh, to keep track of all the multiplicities. So this projective plane curve could be non-reduced. It could have several multiple components. So we will keep track of all the multiplicities. In general case, uh, we will get a projective curve as well. Yes, uh, because uh, we speak about surface singularities, so the projectivized tangent cone will be a curve. And uh, also in general case, uh, possibly the projective, uh, projective uh, this projective curve, it will have possibly multiple components. So it, it, it could be non-reduced. This happens quite often. So non reduced sub scheme, and then it will have non isolated singularities. So here is the proposition. Suppose this projectivized tangent cone is reduced, so it, it has only isolated singularities, and moreover, it is a globally complete intersection. Then uh, the germ is IMC if and only if the projectivized tangent cone is just smooth which means the germ is an ordinary multiple point. So you see there are not so many such versions. Yes, and this is the restriction on the project projectivized tangent cone. So except for the trivial case, when you have ordinary multiple point, the projectivized tangent cone must have non-reduced components for some examples. Using this proposition, we can very quickly, um, yes, very quickly discard some candidates for IMC. So uh, take the surface germ inside C3. Uh, suppose it is of right modality, less, less or equal than two. So it is simple or unimodal or bimodal. Yes, such classifications, once they were quite fashionable, there are tables of uh, such types. Then X is uh, inner metrically conical if and only if it is one of either A1 or T4 or P8. Here is the defining equation for P8. So you see of all the, there, there are large tables, uh, there are many series uh, with several indices. Of all the series, only these three types are IMC. In this sense, uh, the, the, uh, the IMCs are very rare. Yes, we have just three types. Uh, questions? Well, if there are no questions, then, okay, some remarks. So, uh, this, once again, this proposition, yes, uh, the restriction on the tangent cone, um, here, uh, I assume that the projectivized tangent cone must be reduced, but also I add the assumption that it is a globally complete intersection. And this is non empty assumption, non trivial. So uh, if X is a hypersurface, then its strict transform under blow up is again a hypersurface. And this projectivized tangent cone is again a hypersurface in an almost trivial manner. But if X is a complete intersection, then its strict transform it is not necessarily a complete intersection. And this projectivized tangent cone is not necessarily a complete intersection. 
there are very simple examples of where it is violated. So, uh, and we need this assumption. Hopefully, we will, we will be able to get rid of this assumption, but currently we need it. And uh, maybe it is crucial, I, I don't know yet. Uh, now, this proposition actually extends to, uh, to the case when the projectivized tangent cone is non-reduced, but partially, of course. Uh, yes, uh, if uh, the projectivized tangent cone is non-reduced, then uh, uh, there are some other conditions, some other assumptions. Yes, uh, um, and uh, well, this theorem and this proposition, uh, as I stated them here, they are in dimension two for surface singularities. There are extensions to higher dimensions, yes, to ICs of any dimensions, but the extensions currently are weak. Yes, we need some additional assumptions. It's there. These are not if and only if criteria. Uh, but still, we can check many, many types in high dimensions. Well, and uh, as uh, nobody has any questions, I will proceed to the last slide. So let's speak about weighted homogeneous complete intersections and some nearby cases. So uh, maybe going, oops, sorry. Going back, uh, so here uh, in this uh, theorem, yes, in the main theorem, one needs to know the discriminant. In some cases, it is simple to understand the discriminant. In some cases, it would be quite complicated. So one needs to know, uh, we would like to have some other ways to check whether a germ is EMC or not. Uh, and uh, in some cases, we can do it. I have a question, in fact. Yeah. Yes. Uh, in your main result, it's it's not clear um, why you need the hypothesis of X to be an ISIS. I mean, because your hypotheses are, it seems, on the on the discriminant only, right? Right. Uh, I, I agree. Uh, in the theorem, it is absolutely not clear. Currently, uh, we need it for some inner technical lemma. I hope we will be able to get rid of it, yes. But as of now, we need this assumption. Okay, um, thank you. Yes. Mm. Currently, we need it. So, uh, uh, let's speak about weighted homogeneous complete intersections, yes, or some other cases, for example, Newton non-degenerate. Uh, in these cases, uh, one can give some criteria without checking any discriminant, which is useful. Yeah, so let's take uh, the affine space. Yes, now of uh, dimension n plus c, and let's assign some weights, and uh, we will assume that weights are ordered, as, as it is here. And let's take several weighted homogeneous polynomials. So um, f d1 is of weighted degree d1, and so on. And let's take the complete intersection. So now it is of dimension n, uh, not necessarily surface, this arbitrary dimension, and uh, it could have non-isolated singularity. Just a complete intersection, yes, I, uh, complete, being complete intersection, of course, is a restrictive condition. And now perturb the complete intersection by higher order terms, higher order with respect to the weights. So we will get here x0, this is a germ of dimension n, Again, it is a complete intersection. And below, I will assume that this x0 has isolated singularity. So the initial, its leading part could have non-isolated singularity, but this x0 has isolated singularity. Now the theorem. So I leave here some space. I will insert some assumptions. So for this theorem, we need some assumptions. First, I will state the theorem. So suppose x0 is an isolated complete intersection. Again, this is some technical assumption. Currently, we need it. Uh, now, uh, if it is inner metrically conical, then the n lowest weights must be equal. Uh, and uh, for dimension two, if the two lowest weights are equal, then x0 is inner metrically conical. So this is a very simple criterion for weighted homogeneous or semi-weighted homogeneous 
complete intersections. But uh, for this theorem, we need some assumptions. So here are some assumptions. First of all, we assume that uh, the intersection of x0 and uh, uh, the coordinate plane over uh, the zero downstairs, yes, this coordinate plane, that is, it is the smallest possible, it is just the origin. Uh, this is equivalent to saying that the projection onto the first n coordinates is finite. This is a restrictive assumption. It is not always uh, satisfied, but we need it. And another assumption, the, we assume that the single locus of the initial complete intersection sits inside this hyperplane. So the initial complete intersection could have non-isolated singularity, but its single locus must have, must lie inside uh, x1 equal to zero hyperplane. Now, if the initial single lo if the initial uh, weighted homogeneous uh, isolated, if, if the initial weighted homogeneous complete intersection has isolated singularity, then this condition holds trivial. But it, uh, interesting cases are when the initial terms have non-isolated singularity. So under these assumptions, uh, we have this theorem. Yes, uh, maybe some numerical example. Yes, let's take the Briscorn farm singularities plus high order terms, high order terms in the, same, in the in a weighted sense, and assume that <clears throat> PZ is bounded by PY is bounded by PX. <clears throat> the sequence grows. <clears throat> and then uh, it is uh, inner metrically conical if and only if py equals to px. So this result is uh, uh, is known. Yes, I guess it's uh, the result of Alexandra and Lev. Uh, well, and uh, thanks for your attention.